Good afternoon, crew members, and welcome to another Krebs Coho Company of Heroes cast. This time around, it's just going to be me. Uh, so no David this time, no Sergey. just going to be me soloing this cast for you guys. And we're going to be doing a 3v3 on Red Bull Express. The reason I'm going to be doing this is because you guys have been requesting so many uh, team games. You want to see team games, team games, team games. You don't want to see the 1v1s because we've been doing uh, quite a few of those. And you want to see specifically larger ones. Now, 4v4s are are admittedly really really hard to come by so we're gonna be having to take it down a little bit of notch and uh, take it to a 3v3 now the most popular map for 3v3 in company of heroes is in my opinion probably Red Bull Express um, I really can't imagine what other maps uh, there that would be more popular than Red Bull Express at, in 3v3 apart from the Scheldt but we all know the Scheldt is not a proper you know pro map so uh, that will be something that we'll do maybe as an April Fool someday. Oh god, I'm ready giving you with my April Fool's uh, jokes here, but we're gonna be doing a 3v3 on Red Bull Express. Now, I'm back from my trip, so sorry for being away for that week or so, but I'm back into the uh, swing of things. Uh, if you haven't watched the trip video, then I would recommend doing so. I'm sorry if I look a little bit ugly, you maybe can't see this at the moment, but I was bitten like hell by these things called midges. And it'll leave these red marks, almost like mosquitoes in a way. And I've tried every single medicine and I cannot get rid of these things. It's been about a five days now and they're still quite red. And if you guys, I don't know, I'm, I know I'm a pharmacist. If you guys know how to fix it, then leave a comment in the comment box below. I'd be really grateful if you guys could somehow help me with this problem of uh, reducing the redness of these things. But... Oh man, they're all over my body. I look like an absolute freak show at the moment, but I'm hoping it'll go away soon. So anyway, guys, let's focus on the cast at hand, and we're going to be featuring some very uh, pro-ish players. So you know what? I'm going to get the game started, and we'll introduce the players then. So at the five-second mark, and we're going to be starting in three seconds. I believe that's in uh, in Glorious Bastards. That's like, what, the British way? Three? And then you have the German... Anyway. Okay, so we're five seconds. Three, two, one, and let's begin. Six... Seven, eight, nine, and ten, and on we go to another very exciting matchup in the Company of Heroes Battlefield. Now, guys, we've already got the Weapon Support Center going down by Rom Jim over here with some barracks being supported by the move, yes sir, uh, as the other American, notice how these all Americans over here, and also got Schwim Wiggly, Sh Schwimmingly, Schwimmingly, yes, producing uh, barracks as well. Notice how that there's two barracks and one weapon support center. The whole idea about this uh, support center is that it's a support center. And so you only need one of them whilst uh, the other two are going to be building these riflemen who are going to be capping around the field. So you only need, you know, the MGs from a single person or mortar, whatever else, right? So down in the uh, southern corner, what we have from the Wehrmacht is we got Spezzy, the artist, obviously producing the Wehrmacht quarters, Damn Evil Vicious Mouse, Dev M as the other Wehrmacht, and finally we've got uh, Damn Evil Vicious Sand, so I'm guessing Sandland as the other Wehrmacht. So it's going to be a Wehrmacht versus Americans matchup for you guys, and let's take a look at what strategies are already being employed. If we take a look at the tactical map here, you notice that the uh, Red Bull Express map is quite elongated, it's quite rectangular in its form. In fact, what we do if we switch the map around is, well, take a look, you can see it's quite rectangular. That No, that is not a square. That is a rectangle, my friends. <laughs> yes, we're learning shapes in the Krebs Co uh, channel here. Now, yeah, there we go, back to normal. Uh, so, we already got some men moving down along the right-hand side by uh, Spezzy the Artist, just capping over here. Also, um, Dammy Vicious Mouse heading towards the middle, and the other player heading towards the left-hand side with, I believe, some actually support from the MG42 moving up over here. So, we've already got two players entering the middle from the Wehrmacht, and also what looks like be two players from the Americans as well. Notice how they're grabbing this house straight away. This house is like a pivotal point of uh, comebacks, and just holding this place is such a, a, an advantage. If you can hold the house, uh, you have a clear advantage in terms of uh, defensive uh, defensive standings, and so that's what the Americans have done. They've put, I believe, a, uh, an engineer squad in there a little bit earlier just to hold that, and then they've got the uh, <coughs> uh, the MG in, in there, the HMG. And so now they've got a brilliant position, because look at this, this HMG over here, or sorry, this MG42 that was out in the cover, already being uh, chased away, losing two gentlemen, and the Pioneer squad already being chased away as well! 
So that's what I mean, everyone tends to rush for this house. Uh, it's quite typical actually that a lot of people at the beginning of Red Bull Express, as soon as they start the game, they'll actually send an engineer, a pioneer, their first one, even before building a building, they'll actually send it out to the house straight away just so that they can at least say that, oh, this is mine and this is what I plan on keeping. So uh, that is what the Americans have at the moment. And so that means that they've got quite a bit of a lead in terms of holding this uh, more uh, eastern flank of the middle. And so we can see that the uh, Vermox are just trying to harass a little bit, just trying to keep the um, pressure on the tiny bit as they can on the Americans. They don't want them to fully uh, approach at them and just totally conquer them and overrun them. Uh, they're just going to hold them off where they feel a little bit safe, just behind the hay bales at the moment. Uh, we've also got some engineers pr actually putting down some barbed wire. Very, very smart of them to be doing that because they just prevent any sort of flanks from coming in. Now, one little thing I want to be a bit careful of here is because one, one of the best uh, ways of taking out an MG in a house, we obviously know that there's multiple ways of taking out an MG, but so early in a game, it's probably going to be a flamethrower. So, uh, by having this barbed wire here, it sort of negates the uh, flank from a flamethrower if they're trying to use a bait squad. However, I'm a little bit cautious here, as I was saying, because of this, uh, this truck, um, this lorry over here. They could easily maybe get behind it and potentially actually shoot across it, uh, but that really depends. We'll have to see what happens out of that if they actually do decide to get a flamethrower. Uh, if I were the Americans, what I'd probably do is just build, uh, just build some barbed wire just behind this behind this uh, truck just to prevent them getting any cover because obviously cover is uh, a good way of reducing suppression we all know the basics and you know just making your opponent the Vermont have more of a difficult time so over on the left hand side whilst the middle is uh, quite quiet at the moment uh, we can see that the Vermont are trying to push on up however what is this over here we've got just some uh, riflemen uh, huddling away having a cup of tea in the uh, house over here they're just saying, oh yeah, we'll just watch the battle as it unfolds. You ever watch that Mel Gibson movie, The Patriot? You know, when they're actually in the house uh, and they're watching the battlefield? It's sort of like that. Unfortunately, there's no cannonballs uh, being shot across the battlefield and ripping people's uh, legs off. But uh, you know what? That is uh, pretty cool anyway. So <laughs> we've got the, uh, what is this? Uh, just the Volksgrenadiers holding off over here. Looks like they don't have much opposition at the m uh, oh. Uh, right now uh, just a few riflemen, but I think they're getting a little bit worried They're trying to see what's happening over in the middle and uh, Because what's happening over the middle in fact is that the Americans are pushing in on the Vermont And the reason that they're actually able to do that is because of these pesky pesky mortars Produced by that weapon support center. This is only produced by one person remembering that's the only single person Rom Jim I believe who's building the uh, yeah Rom Jim who went for weapon support uh, so he is the one that's using- whoops! Oh god. Oh no, no, the graphics, the graphics, no! Oh, perfect, they're gone. They're back. I hate when it does that! I was actually beginning to uh, panic a little bit there, just because I didn't know if I'd have to uh, pause the replay or even do it all over again. That would be horrendous in my opinion. It's only five minutes, but, you know, I hate restarting uh, a replay. I've had to do it many times before. I just hate doing it! Hate doing it! So anyway, we've got that mortar produced by Rom Jim, and it's actually brilliant. Uh, the nice thing about the Americans is that if you're playing team games, you can mix it up going for WSC and Barracks, and you'll have that mixture of units that the Vermont normally wouldn't have. Yes, the Vermont can get Volksgrenadiers and MG42, but they cannot produce a mortar from their Krieg Barracks. And so just having this mortar out by the Americans gives them an early advantage in just keeping these... Um, uh, MG42s at bay. In fact, you can just see what the hell happened right there. And oh my god! All those guys dying, but the medics are having a, a field day over here. Like, sure enough, all these guys died. Did we actually lose the MG42? It actually looks like we lost the MG42. Uh, horrendous way for it to just go down like that. Oh, and we've got a jeep just um, falling falling back on these uh, snipers by actually being taken out by a Panzerfaust over here and a little bit more graphic wear. Sorry about that guys, I'm not trying to do it on purpose, obviously. But uh, the, the Vermont are really getting back into this. Look at this, they've come in for a flank along the right hand side. Um, and the Americans are pretty much being pushed totally from the uh, the mid, mid, mid side. Uh, all they have left is just these defending units by Rom Jim, such as the uh, HMG and also the mortar team over here. But really not that much. They need support, more support down. from the riflemen. And unfortunately that Volksgrenadier squad going down. have absolutely no idea why it went down. That's kind of pathetic in my, in my uh, opinion. To lose a, 
Uh, Volksgrenadier right in the middle of the battlefield. I mean, that's where you should be paying attention, right? Uh, Volksgrenadier is just sitting there for no apparent reason. They need to kill these medics and, you know, preferably destroy this medic station while they still can. I mean, uh, these riflemen and all that were at bay over at the base. But now you can see the entourage of the Americans heading up forward here. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about these graphical errors. I'm, I swear I'm not trying to do that on purpose. <laughs> it's just every now and then. Oh, jeez. And so they're moving up forward over here. Yeah. As you can see, just all these men. Oh, God. Uh, if this happens one more time, I have a feeling I'm going to have to... Uh, possibly open up my game again. I'm just hoping it doesn't. Okay, and we're back. Fortunately, I had to uh, actually restart the game again just because these graphical errors were happening way too much. But anyway, the part that we left off at was at the part of the entourage, all the men coming back onto the field from the Americans. So we're 8 minutes and 30 seconds, and we're starting in 3, 2, 1, and begin. Okay, so following up on where we left off, we can see all of these men just heading down and pretty much chasing away the Wehrmacht entirely. <laughs> Not exactly what happened, sure what happened to the Wehrmacht. I mean, they had such a great opportunity of actually just solidifying their fortifications here. They pushed off the Americans um, uh, quite a bit, uh, at least two of the team members, the ones the riflemen, and they almost uh, annihilated the one Enemy with uh, the down. weapon support center, Rom Sector Jim, but they had a, gr a really good window of opportunity there where they could have possibly put down some barbed wire, uh, maybe moved in some moved in some MG42s, and maybe start solidifying it as soon as they possibly could because that's what you need to do you need to move forward and then you also need to uh hold it down and lock it essentially and just keep on doing this pattern of uh doing so stuff like that moving up forward solidifying moving up forward locking it down and so on and so forth right okay so what we've got from the Wehrmacht is that they've entered their mid game and same with the americans really because the americans have also gotten their t17 you can see the half track out by damn evil vicious sand over here uh, supported by his grenadiers, so obviously going for a heavy infantry strategy. You can see multiple folks grenadiers, uh, grenadiers and whatever else out by him. So heavy in for him. Gotta see what maybe he's gonna go for. I could imagine possibly terror or defensive. Uh, both would cater quite well to a heavy infantry strategy. Uh, what's going on, on the right hand side over here is that you can see that the M8 has been fired on, but actually a pack going down as well. So not looking too good for the Wehrmacht because they're losing essential units, but Geschutzwagen coming out right at the nick of time by damn evil vicious mouse over here. As you can see, actually skipping on up to the Sturm Armory. Uh, Geschutzwagen not being my most favorite of vehicles, in my personal opinion, you don't have to agree with it, but I think that it's not really worth the cost because it dies far too easy. I much prefer the uh, Stug. It doesn't have the same firepower or fire rate as the Geschutzwagen, but it definitely makes up in survivability, which in my opinion is uh, <laughs> a lot more crucial when you come to compare these two uh, vehicles here. Uh, T-17s obviously replacing the M8, uh, up to a matter of opinion. Some people prefer having the mines out from the Greyhounds, others prefer having the White Phosphorus round out by the uh, T-17. I also believe the T-17 initially has yeah. more health than the M8, um, but it uh, gains more from veterancy. However, uh, the M8, you can upgrade it so you can get instant health bonuses, right? You can't do that with the T-17. You have to earn it by veterancy. So really up to a matter of opinion. I actually prefer the T-17 if you want to ask me uh, personally what I think. Just because I like that it has a, uh, a faster fire rate than the M8. Um, and I think that the longevity is actually there a little bit longer because it can get the white phosphorus round Which could be really important in the late game and here we go We can see a rifleman squad going down just like that could the Americans make up for it by taking out this grenadier squad No, it doesn't look like it because they're actually gonna be focusing what's happening on the left hand side. Whoa naval verfer I believe that was a naval verfer. Uh, yeah, it looks like it actually uh, damaging these snipers quite a bit here and the Grenadier is trying to just locate them. Where are you? Where are you guys? So we can get a counter snipe out by our snipers, but unfortunately not having that range, that sight range, that's quite surprising actually. Not having that sight range to actually reveal them. Hmm, hmm, hmm. There we go, taking out that uh, mortar squad. I think that's what their initiative was at the moment. Take out that mortar squad because it's vet too, but unfortunately being taken out 
on the uh, back foot as they were retreating and here we go the Pumas moving up right directly next to him oh just revealing that sniper for a little bit of a second a tiny fraction of a second these these uh oh my god they really want to kill these snipers so badly one of them actually going down the other one tiny tiny percentile of uh, health left and you can see that the Americans just trying to uh, gain back some of their uh, losses here by tr well, kind of trying to take out the Geschutzwagen and the Puma, unfortunately, not being able to finish them off. Now they need to get repaired. They can't be kept on the front line. Look at that stuff going, being blown apart here. Uh, half track, in fact. And the AT gun going down because of some snipers. So, uh, whilst all this action is happening, the central, let's take a look at some build orders. We saw Damio Vicious Sand with the Krieg Barracks, uh, Dev M with the Sturm Armory, and also Spezzi going for the Krieg Barracks as well. Interesting story stuff. Um, by those two gentlemen there. So, hmm, I don't know the exact reasoning behind it. Maybe they're. Well, let's actually maybe go take a look at what they're uh, going for in terms of doctrinal choices. One of them, uh, Spezzi, has actually gone for his Blitzkrieg. Interesting choice. Lots and lots of infantry, so maybe he's going to be getting veterancy out on them. No idea. He, in fact, doesn't even have that yet, even though it's 13 minutes and 40 seconds into the game. That's a little bit late to be leaving this veterancy, especially when your opponent has um, bars out. You know, that's <laughs> that's a clear indicator. As soon as your opponent has bars, you should definitely have some veterancy, especially veterancy too if you have a lot of grenadiers. Uh, helps with having that uh, elite armor, but um, that is what it has turned out to be so far. So snipers just taking out this AT gun yet again. Uh, engineers just remand it, and the single engineer by himself just kill himself because uh, the world is too too harsh of a place to live in when you don't have any friends. And so, Rifleman moving up on up over here, just chasing away these Grenadiers with Panther Shreks. Not really much competition for uh, competition for the Americans here. They've got T-17 and Rifleman, but oh, actually running away. I guess that the Grenadiers, even though they had Panther Shreks, still too much uh, anti-infantry power uh, to deal with. Plus those riflemen a little bit low on health. So, oh, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky stuff happening along the right-hand side. We actually saw some decaps on the critical manpower points over here. So that uh, fuel point was decapped for just a slight bit of time. It's actually being recaptured right now. But that is a, a brilliant thing to do sometimes. Sometimes when your opponents are uh, focused on the center action, what you can actually do if you have a you know an available, a free a pioneer or engineer squad or just any sort of useless units or cat and crowd or something just just go harass those uh, cutoff points if you can actually cut off both of them then you <laughs> deny your opponent of basically all the resources literally all of their resources are cut off and so a uh, good idea to be doing that uh, that's if you can cut off both of them uh, notice how both of those points are actually close to the base so it is re easy to recapture so we'll have to see what happens anyway Okay, lots and lots of infantry over here on the western flank, and it's all standoff. The uh, Wehrmacht actually were being pushed back for uh, a time being there, but look how tenacious they are. Look how tenacious these uh, three Wehrmacht players are, just staying in that fight, uh, bringing it back to the Americans, and just, uh, even though they're blobbing like hell, they're just bringing it back, and now he's finally got some veterancy out on his... Uh, infantry, you can see, in fact, two veterans see two out on them. And straight free run, teaching them the hard lesson of why you should not blob. The <laughs> minimum thing that they could do <laughs> is actually just separate them, you know, keep some distance between everything. Because now they're just prone to uh, being strafed by artillery, by nuclear pineapples. It's, it's, uh, it's not a good idea just to keep them all together like that. Moving them around in one big uh, blob. Oh my god, M8, M8 being taken out in two shots right from the side armor. You can see that uh, sniper actually revealing the distance and massive, massive range on these things. Uh, but perfect penetration bonuses because they were in camouflage, just destroying that M8 uh, very nicely there. And so everything is moving in for the Wehrmacht. They have managed to effectively push off the Americans who don't have much of a counter at the moment. I mean, you can see that there's heavier armor coming out for the Wehrmacht, the Geschutzwagens, the Pumas and Stu's. Obviously not the heaviest, but they're getting there. Um, and so what do the Americans have to respond to this? Well, not a whole lot. They've got T-17, 
Uh, and that's pretty much it. Apart from their vanilla units such as the engineers and the uh, riflemen, they've just got some AT guns to support if their AT guns are going to be alive. But oh, what is this? I'm speaking a little bit too fast over here. Rom Jim coming out with a very much so needed M10, a tank hunter. Uh, this is going to be uh, particularly important here because it's going to be useful for taking on these heavier vehicles. This is what I mean about the T-17 and why I pre uh, prefer it over uh, of the uh, M8. Because of that stun ability, you look at what just happened there, you saw that um, Shnu get actually stunned. Now it was on the retreat, I don't know if it was going to die. Um, anyway, because of the massive range of the AT guns, maybe it would have happened, but very useful for the Americans um, Move yes, sir to actually just think of that think. Oh my god. He's retreating. He's on a tiny bit of health left I'm just gonna actually keep him there and just destroy it Destroy that vital unit and so uh, good man uh, munitions well spent in my opinion Maybe he could have killed it on retreat, but uh, I guess he just wanted to be on the safe side, keep it near his uh, front line rather than uh, taking it closer to his enemy. Alright, so the Wehrmacht actually falling back slightly to the sandbags over here. <coughs> Still snipers uh, being pesky pesky. Look at this. Grandier standing there with only one gentleman left in that squad. Come on, get him out of there. Sniper finishing him off. We knew what was going to happen. Perhaps, um, perhaps the Wehrmacht player lost in a micro somewhere, maybe he was at his base, maybe he was looking at something else. Too much, too much. Clyde P out on the field for Rome Jim, obvious tank destroyer, uh, armored company doctrine selected for him. Clyde P being so useful, uh, <laughs> Spezzy the artist not learning uh, that he shouldn't blob! Simple as, if he didn't learn from that engagement on the left-hand side by the strafe runs, I mean, having a strafe, knowing that your opponent has strafe is enough to know that you should not blob, but, you know, Calliope just out on the field here, uh, it's gonna mean a uh, double whammy. If one is not ready, probably the strafing run will be ready, or whatever, you know, vice versa. So, let's take a look at Rom Jim with his tank destroyer or armored company. I keep on saying it like it's the Panzer Elite Doctrine. It's, in fact, the armored company... Uh, selected by him, and so he's gone along that uh, the the uh, right side, and he's got that allied war machine, and move on up to that Calliope. Going to be very useful because a lot of these infantry uh, by two of the Wehrmacht, they both went for Krieg bar uh, the Krieg barracks, so lots and lots of infantry. Calliope, perfect counter for that. Uh, also, we noticed that there's not any heavy heavier vehicles coming out like Panthers or or uh, something along that line. Panzer IVs, Panthers. Uh, you know, Tigers we don't really know of, but we we know that there's no Panthers in that because we see the Sturm Armory vehicles out. So it means that whatever could come out from a tank depot, T4, um, Panzer Command is just going to be delayed. And so that's why they may be going for the Clypey. They don't need to go for a Pershing just yet. And so they're in the safe zone right now. Uh, Schwimmingly has gone for the Airborne Doctrine. Maybe he's the gentleman that's uh, coming out with all those strafing runs, you know, being very, very annoying to all the blobs over here. And here we go. Some more shooting stars right across the map. Sniper. Whoa. Sniper actually retreating out of there. If he stayed in that location, definitely would have been dead. Uh, two rockets landing near him, just taking him almost out. Yeah, let's see what's happening with Move Yes Sir. He's gone for the Infantry Doctrine. All of them going for different doctrines. What a, what an interesting, uh, interesting decision. Not exactly sure what the uh, reasoning behind it. Maybe if we look at the units that they have, maybe we could decide then. But uh, I, that's probably going to take a little bit more time to actually do. So let's actually focus on what's happening over here. You can see, again, Spezzy spamming these uh, infantry all together. Look at this! All of these grenadiers! Massive strafing run coming here. Let's see all the bodies left behind. You can see one, two, three, and I can't even count them anymore, but we can see uh, hands being thrown up into the air. <sighs> lots and lots of bodies left behind, and that is what happens when you blob, but strafe being more effective against all those units clumped up together. And so, I'm learning yet again for the third time, you'd think that he'll learn after the third time that Hey, maybe I shouldn't blob. Maybe I shouldn't do it. But uh, I don't know what happens in these minds of players sometimes. Maybe Rusty? Don't know. Hey, you know, they're more expert players, so I don't know what's really going on. But uh, anyway, at least the right-hand flank is in their hands. You've got a medic bunker set up over here. You got, you can see the uh, Wii medics just running back and forth. Uh, in fact, be <laughs> taking a shot right to the chest. 
by the sniper. I mean, oh god. No mercy in this battlefield. No mercy at all, is there? Uh, whilst the American medics can roam free, you can see this one just uh, running uh, the longest yard. Yeah, just running the full distance, isn't he? Miles, miles, miles. Calliope landing on top of this neighbor for taking him out, and oh, everything is crumbling apart beneath the Wehrmacht. Uh, they're losing their territory along the left-hand side, as you can see the Americans were actually doing the exact same thing as what the Wehrmacht were doing, decapping those vital uh, cutoff points. And what we've got here, uh, we've got a, a wolf pack of Pumas. This is going to help much against this, uh, basically, basically, um, line fortifications here defensive line by the Americans I think it's gonna be too much for them to uh, take on it from a frontal assault notice how there's so many t-17s that if the uh, Americans really needed it they could easily uh, use some uh, stuns phosphorus rounds to stun any bold vehicles that were trying points. to flank their AT guns or anything like that but here we go we've got dev uh, sandland <laughs> sandland coming out with his panther which is uh, definitely uh, could be de uh, needed at this point because we saw some uh, heavier vehicles such as the M10 and all around a panther is always useful. You, you always need panthers. There's, there's never a time you don't need them, right? So, I uh, don't know how successful it's going to be. Maybe it could come in from the flank, uh, perhaps. Maybe it could act as a meat shield, Operation take some fire. No idea. Center. We'll have to see, to be honest. Uh, Shimwagen is trying to chase down snipers, but... Look at this Shimvakin, absolutely dodging all of these AT, AT shells. You can see that the AT shells are just sort of shooting, but stopping a little bit because they're, they're calculating. Should I hit? Should I not hit? Hmm. Don't know. Oh my god, look at that! <laughs> absolute curveball again! Nothing can hit the Shrim. Obvious bonuses with Jeeps and uh, Shrimvagins and motorcycles and whatever is that they are much harder to be killed by AT guns. Uh, <laughs> a definite a big bonus against the accuracy of AT guns and great stuff and that just means that maybe the uh, Schimwagen can uh, chase down these snipers and not really have to worry too much about the AT fire of course it does have to worry but it's not the uh, biggest of priorities so what we've got is the AT gun reaching veterans 2 and some sort of artillery coming down maybe yes that's the firestorm right on top of all those uh, units there a uh, sniper was somewhere here. Calliope engaging all the units and a sticky bomb just coming down right on top of that Geschutzwagen instant vet 2 on the rifleman. Man! This is what I mean. Geschutzwagen, in, in my opinion, is just not worth the cost. It dies so easily. You can see that it still had, you know, like a third of its health left, but one sticky bomb finishing it off. Reason being because the Geschutzwagen does not have as much health as the Stug. I believe it has something like 375 health, maybe 350 in comparison to the 500 of the Stug. So, you know, that's that's what you have to say about it. I think uh, that's an epitome of why the uh, Stug is better in my opinion. Anyway, we've got this uh, Panther over here that was, again, stunned by the uh, T-17. Very, very useful. Now this Panther is all the way back here. In the midst of an M10 blob, last place it wants to be in, eh? Hmm. Huh. <laughs> and now it's just going to be probably destroyed here. Yep. And Vet 2 on the M10, allowing it to get um, a higher max speed. I believe also increased penetration, 50% on Veteran C2. And also, if it gets to Veteran C3, I think it increases weapon damage. So, it's now uh, an important unit of the... Uh, of the American arsenal. <laughs> okay, uh, Tiger coming in uh, onto the field from the Blitzkrieg Doctrine of Sandland and providing a little bit of support for this downed naval verfer. But all in all, you can tell quite clearly that the VPs are much, much in favor of the Americans, and the game is. Uh, <laughs> If you just look at the tactical map, you can see how much the Americans are leading. They've got such a solid uh, defensive line up at the front over here, at pretty much at the sandbags. They've got harassing units moving out every now and then, such as this wolf pack of M10s, seeing what they can maybe uh, take back for, take back for their, uh, for the litter, right? What kills can they take in for their uh, pride of wolves? <laughs> 
All right, so Tiger taking some fire, but this is kind of like the only offensive unit for the uh, Wehrmacht right now. Uh, yeah, the, that's all the Tiger. Yeah, I think the Tiger is literally the only thing that the Wehrmacht are using right now. Uh, they've got some men held up at their base. Again, that blob of men, <laughs> which shouldn't be a blob. It should always be separated, but that's what it is. And so the Tiger is the only thing left in the Wehrmacht army that is defending on the defensive um, perimeter over here. <laughs> the Wehrmacht being pushed back almost to their base. All they have left are these cutoff points and just a few stray points on the side. Notice how they've actually uh, put an observation post on this uh, area over here. It just means that they can get more uh, munitions from it. It's because it's a medium uh, munitions points, so giving that plus eight nifty bonus on on everything over there. You can also tell that the Americans have done the exact same thing. So both knowing the strategies of the map, another observation post on this uh, munitions point over there by the Americans. So they know that they need the munitions. The munitions is always going to be useful for a bit of support, and so having that uh, having that munitions available means that you can just call up more artillery and just all that nice stuff. Every and we all love artillery. Ooh, it makes it all so snuggly inside, right? So that's what the. Uh, uh, Americans have at the moment just a great income of plus 62 at, uh, right now and also plus 45 fuel tons and tons of stuff tiger out of control let's see this veterancy and it's actually going veterancy one on this almost dead m10 and look how they're all charging right into the heart of the grenadiers can they kill a lot of them let's oh look at all of them you can see there's the numbers dwindling down as they're all being crushed what is going on what is going on? They're all throwing themselves into the treads of the M10s. You can see all the ming mangled bodies the of the <laughs> Grenadiers and that allied war machine being very useful to bring back at least two M10s, but all of them destroyed in that encounter. All M10s destroyed, just two brought back onto the field. How the hell is this one down to... What? How is this one immobilized? Is there, was there a mine or something? Yes, in fact, there was a mine. Oh my god, I didn't even notice that that was happening. Uh, but it looked like a mine was placed down earlier of some sort. Maybe a, a mine sandwich or Goliath or something. It looked like quite a big uh, crater. But in fact, actually down. immobilizing this M10 and destroying the engine as well. <laughs> Funny stuff to be seeing stuff. Uh, things like that happen in the game. You just gotta appreciate the moments like that. When players do something a little bit different. Um, if you know where your opponent's spawn point is then take advantage of it hey put uh, tank traps around it build barbed wire around it you know just really depends you could even do it to the, the Wehrmacht over here you know if you can do it why not obviously the Wehrmacht have an easier time if they can crush it with heavier vehicles but Americans Enemy yeah definitely uh, a nice thing to do but anyway Calliope killing off all these guys in the Wehrmacht base and you can tell by the sad faces that it's not a game that the Wehrmacht really want to be a part of right now. You can see good game coming down from all of them. And five VPs left. Come on, tick down, tick down. Two, and... And... There we go. Playback is over. Whoa, so that was a lot of action. A lot of action. I hope I could absorb as much as I could. But, of course, it's something that happens with a lot of these bigger games. 3v3, 4v4 is that you're bound to miss some of the action. Uh, maybe even a lot of the action, just because there's so much going on across the field. You can't look at everything at the same time. The best thing I can maybe do is do a panoramic view. But hey-ho, um, there you guys go. I mean, that is the replay, and yes, no graphical errors anymore. Thank God, we could actually enjoy it as it was meant to be. Um, where the allies or the axes go wrong? Well, I noticed it quite a few times. In the beginning, uh, actually I won't say this first, in the beginning they lost that building uh, very very soon. If you can hold this building as soon as you possibly can, then it gives you that advantage early on. Uh, but I noticed quite a few, a number of times there that the Americans, or sorry, the Wehrmacht actually lost a number of squads needlessly. You saw that, uh, I believe Volksgrenadier, maybe Grenadier squad go down over here. Uh, you saw some other Grenadiers go down. Those are both Grenadiers were standing up here a little bit um, over on this hill uh, a little bit earlier in the game. That could easily have destroyed the medic station. I mean, it's gone now, but yeah, all these things that could have been optimized, right? So well done to the Americas for actually winning this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you for being crew members of the 
Krebs Koho channel. You are all crew members! So until next time, I will catch you all later. Take care.